Welcome to the fifth annual International Cybersecurity Conference. The event is held by the Blavatnik Interdisciplinary Cyber Research Center, Yuval Naman Workshop for Science, Technology, and Security, Tel Aviv University, and the Israeli National Cyber Bureau, Prime Minister Office. More than 4,000 delegates from over 40 countries arrived once again to hear and share insights on the latest developments and dilemmas in cybersecurity. Over 60 international top speakers will give their take on the different angles of the 2015 cyber revolution. Sessions include The Secret of Cyber Success, Beyond Internet, Privacy, National Policy and International Cooperation, Cyber Innovation, Trendsetters. You are invited to participate in the Cyber Week satellite events, Parallel Tracks, the academic perspective on cybersecurity challenges, technological hack talks and live demonstration, startup pitch event, youth educational conference for the next generation, and the Cyber Challenge. Explore the Cyber Revolution. Good morning and welcome to the second day of the International Cybersecurity Conference. I trust you all had a great time yesterday. Our agenda for today is exciting. Speakers from the academic side together with speakers from the ind industry, Israeli speakers together with speakers from abroad, Entre entrepreneurs, investors, service providers, and others all came here today to speak and share their unique point of view. In parallel to the main event at the keynote hall, we will have two more exciting events. The startup pitch session in which startup companies that were handpicked will pitch their ideas to the audience. The second event is taking place at the basement of this hall right behind me, the Israeli Cyber Challenge is a hacking game where different teams compete, compete against each other. The game was designed and developed by, by the OFAC unit of IDF. If a hands-on guy or girl and technology excites you, you are more than welcome to attend the Hack Talks versus Tech Talks. Thank you again for coming and I wish you a great day. And now I welcome to the stage Professor Isaac Ben Israel the head of the ICRC. Thank you. Good morning for the second day, or third day actually, because on the first day, uh, on Monday, we already had a kind of war simulation game uh, in which we played some cyber scenario and we will hear about it uh, later today. Uh, yesterday, in parallel to the uh, main sessions here, we also had some uh, side tracks. Uh, one of them was the, uh, what we call the academic track. And before we shall uh, continue with today uh, agenda, I would like to show you uh, a clip that we took yesterday from this uh, parallel track for those of you who didn't have the chance to go to be in two places at the same time. Uh, please. of malware and a particular country, how accurately can we forecast 
the expected number of infected hosts that is infected by that particular piece of malware. So what is the problem? The problem is very simple. Uh, trying to read the brain uh, is quite uh, complicated. Unfortunately, the most uh, seminal work in this field was done in 1924. So the system that we are looking at has a single, uh, a simple band with really two electrodes on the forehead. And with these two electrodes, we take uh, the data onto uh, the cloud. There we do very sophisticated uh, analysis. And then we get high level interpretation of brain activity uh, which can be used for a vast uh, number of uh, different applications. The National Cybersecurity Conference at Israel highlights what is arguably the world's best cybersecurity capabilities. Israel is the world leader in cybersecurity, and this conference allows people from many different parts of the world to understand the latest advances in cybersecurity for better corporate benefit, for better government-based security protocols, and for policymakers to better inform their decision-making. It is an invaluable asset to ensuring security of open and free internet use in the world. The Kennes Academy has been in the first year and brings experts מהמובילים בעולם ומישראל להציג בכנס נושאים בתחום הסייברי האינטרדיסציפלינרי. הכנס לשמחתי השנה מתקדם ברמה האקדמית הגבוהה שהוא מציג ובאיכות של המחקרים שמוצגים כאן. Okay, uh, to open the day, I would like to invite now Dr. Gior Yaron, who is the chairman of the Executive uh, Council of Tel Aviv University. Gior, please. Itzik, thank you, and uh, good morning. Uh, I told Itzik that start time of 8.30 is like midnight for many entrepreneurs. I guess I wasn't totally wrong. Okay, uh, the subject of my discussion is uh, going to be focused on uh, leading the next frontier for cybersecurity. Uh, we believe that in Tel Aviv University, we basically have all the assets, so to speak, uh, to lead uh, that revolution and uh, that frontier. As you well know, uh, in, the Tel Aviv, in Tel Aviv University, like in any university, we are primarily being measured by research. And we basically are researching in areas where we feel that we are either number one or have a great opportunity to become number one. However, in Tel Aviv University, we have taken upon ourselves another charter, and that is just a second, let's make sure I got this right. They told me I need to push a button. Question is, which one? Which button do I have to push? I know, but the question is on what? Okay, while well, somebody comes here and shows me what I have to push, that's what I pushed. Here you go. So you're stronger than I am. Okay. So uh, we feel that we need not only to lead in research, but we also need to lead in making an impact, if you will, not only on the economy, but also on national defense. Meaning most countries, it's good enough if you create an impact only on the economic uh, systems. But unfortunately, with the unfriendly neighborhood that we live in, we need to be able to make an impact in other places, and we have basically set the bar relatively high. The impact we'd like to make is similar, if not better, than the impact Stanford University has had on the U.S. economy through the Silicon Valley. A very high bar, if you will. 
Okay, so how do we think uh, that should be done? You really need to look at the computer revolution that's in front of us, and there are three phases. The first phase is now looks very simple. At the time, it looks very complicated, where you had a, a computer center and you basically had variety of uh, software, CRM, ERP, that are used to manage, uh, if you will, the company. The second one in which we live today is the internet, where we have hundreds of millions of contact points, customers, companies, individuals, that are connecting the cloud. And uh, Facebook has reported that they have now uh, exceeded 1.4, so let's assume 2 billion contact points. The wave that's coming in our direction is the IoT, which is called the Internet of Things, or the Internet of Everything, where we are going to have anywhere between 25 billion to 50 billion contact points, which means every one of them can serve as a window, a door, a chimney, or whatever, for malware, for Trojan horses, whatever. So, uh, if you want to look at it, uh, one other graphic way of looking at it, you have those 25 billion to 50 billion uh, contact points, over which there's a layer of not big data, but very big data, and you want to run analytics on it, and you want to run analytics on quality data. So where can we come to play? We can come to play and should come to play in three areas. The first one is educating the next generation. So they are better than we are. I always used to say to organizations I ran, I'm happy to report if they had to accept me as an employee, most likely they would have not. I.e., we want to continuously raise the bar, and the first charter we have is to educate the next generation. In Tel Aviv University, I've listed only three of quite a few, industrial engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, and each and every one of them has another di several disciplines below that. The next one, which is really the primary objective of an academic institution, is to conduct research. And we have research really in a variety of areas. I've again listed a few, mobile, cloud, uh, image and video recognition, critical infrastructure and the likes. And it's being supported, as they say in Hebrew, Imen Lechem and Torah, by the Blavatnik Center, who is providing financing means to conduct that. But for that, you also need a roof over your head, and I see that Gil has entered the room earlier, so Checkpoint has graciously enough uh, contributed the, the Checkpoint building for computer science. So not only we'll have the researchers and the students and the programs and the money, we'll also have a roof above our head to conduct uh, that research. Okay, so we have studies, we have research. Now the question is, how do we create an impact on the economy? To that end, we've raised the fund that's called the Momentum Fund, where we have two seed investors, Tata and Tamasek, each one putting $5 million. It's a sum that doesn't even come on the radar screen, but the reason they did that, they would like to have visibility into the next generation innovation. So, in fact, I see here that I put Tamasek for $177 billion, they today run $220 billion. So they don't know how to write checks for $5 million, but the reason they've done that is to do, get the visibility to the next generation innovation. What that allows us to do is to bridge the gap, if you will, between end of research and beginning of commercialization, what we call crossing the valley of death. The next layer, is the Innovation Entrepreneurship Center led by Professor David uh, Mendelovic, which again has four legs. One is teaching, we discussed that. Mentoring, which is leading the entrepreneurs how to go about doing it. Acceleration model, and an incubator model. Don't ask me the difference between accelerator and incubator. Maybe Avi can later on expand on that. But generally speaking, enable you to make the first steps towards commercialization. And if you want to take an overview picture how that basically looks, you have the science coming from the left, you have our partners, industrial partners, VCs that know how to build companies, that have built companies, or companies that are already up and running, coming and providing guidance on the business side. And all that is supported by the Tel Aviv infrastructure, 
which would allow that uh, basically to happen. Now, why do we believe that we'll win? Very simple. Uh, this eye chart, and I'm not sure you can read it from uh, far away, basically summarizes uh, the numbers of uh, companies created by entrepreneurs coming from which academic institutions. You can see Tel Aviv being number nine, which is in the top 10. On a relative basis, we are much higher, because Stanford is a bigger university and the like, so this is not normalized. But there's no other academic institution in Israel that gets to the top 10. And I'm proud to say that we at Tel Aviv University are the number one leading the charge. And I believe that if you take it into cyber and do a similar ranking, we're even much better than that. Last but not least, and this is an eye chart that you probably can't read, but I'll focus on the highlights. Uh, this is taken from The Economist from several months back, which basically shows that Tel Aviv is second only to the Silicon Valley in terms of density of startups. And you see some other small cities, like Chicago being 10th, London being 7th, Moscow being 14th. Little Tel Aviv is second only to the Silicon Valley. So I believe that if we do it right, uh, we have a chance really to take both the economic uh, uh, ecosystem in Israel to the next level, and likewise as it relates uh, to national defense. Thank you very much.